This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's episode of Inkscape Explained, I'm going to be going over the Select tool in Inkscape, which is this first tool up here. And um, you pretty much have, if you've ever used Inkscape, it's pretty self-explanatory what this tool does. But what I want to do is go over all of these things up here that show up in this toolbar when you when you choose the Select tool, because as you may know, as you choose each of these tools, you get different options that show up here in these in these toolbars. And what I'd like to do is go over each and every one of these and each tool with a fine tooth comb. So let, uh, let me get started by opening up my Align and Distribute menu and the Stroke and Fill dialog because this is how I like to work. And I'll just create a square. Uh, I'll make that red. And I'll go back to the Select tool. Okay, so the first thing we have up here, Select All Objects. All right, let me create a few of these copies. I'll create a red copy. I'll create a green copy. And then I'll create um, I'll create a black copy, and let me click off the deselect everything. If I go and click on this, it selects all the all of the objects. It selects all objects on the page, so that's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. Now we got this tool up here: select all objects in all visible layer in all visible and unlocked layers. So this means this is this is pretty much does the same thing as the select all objects, but only uh, if you're working with layers, which is uh, up here. This is your layer menu, and I haven't done much layers in any of my tutorials, but I will go over that in a uh, separate video. Uh, the next thing, let me select all those again. The next thing here is deselect any selected objects or nodes. You click on that, and everything deselects. So let's say you're working with a bunch of stuff, and you have this selected and that selected, and you rotate this around, and you deselect that, and you grab that one and put this over here, and now you're done, so you can just click on that. Or what I like to do is what you always see me do in my tutorials. I like to just click off of the page. Or you could just press escape on the keyboard. That's another easy way to deselect everything. I don't normally come up here and use that a lot. Okay, so the next thing here, rotate selection 90 degrees counterclockwise. And that's pretty, that's pretty self-explanatory. Let me take this here. I'll duplicate this and unify this together just to make a really weird, strange shape. And I'll rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise. And you can see as it, you know, as it says, it rotated around uh, counterclockwise. And right here, it's the same thing, only it's clockwise. So you put it back in its position. And this up here, flip horizontally, and then flip vertically. Pretty self-explanatory. And of course, up here you have the um, the raise and lower selections. Let me delete this and get back to these objects over here. Let me bring the opacity of these all, all the way up so you can see it a little better. And I'm going to take these and stack them on top of each other like this. If I click this one, this, this black uh, shape, lower selection to the bottom, it sends it to the bottom. And you see me do this regularly in my tutorials. So if you've watched my tutorials, you probably understand what all of this is. Uh, I'll try to go over it really quick anyway. Lower selection, one step. And it just lowered it beneath that green box. And if I click that one more time, it lowers it beneath the red box, I mean the blue box. And I'll just undo that. And the next thing, raise selection one step. So I'll click on the red box, I'll raise that one step, raise it another step, raise it another step, and there it is at the top. And let me send that back to the bottom. And, and of course, raise selection to the top. Just press that once, and there it is. So that's pretty uh, straightforward and self-explanatory. Uh, what we have here now, the X and Y axis. Let me take this shape and put this over here. Now, uh, it should show you... As you move the shape around, the X and the Y axis changes. And this is relative to the page. If you notice here on the X axis, it's at this location. But if I move it around, it'll change. Same with the Y axis. If I take the X axis and I click and drag this down, it brings it to the left. If I click and drag this, I mean, if I click this up, it brings it to the right. And uh, you look at the Y axis, bring that down, it brings it down. Bring that up, it brings it up. And that may seem pointless, but um, it's actually pretty useful. I, I, I often use that when I'm creating like a drop shadow or something. Like for example, let me create a, let me make this white, and then I'll duplicate this and make this black, and I'll lower this beneath the white one. And let's say I want to make a drop shadow like this. I'll, I'll give it a little bit of a blur. But I want to, instead of doing that, I want to lower that down one step first. So I'll just press down on the keyboard to move that down a little bit. Let's say I didn't want it to go down that far. 
I can go back up to the Y, well I can undo that and I can just click on the Y, the Y axis and just bring this down just a little bit. This is the smallest amount of increments you can move an object. That's why I like to use this sometimes. So I have it just a hair beneath that white box. And then I can go ahead and give this like a 0.6 blur or um, one or whatever it is, or you can make this 100. So let me undo that uh, and put that back there. Get rid of that. Uh, what else do we have here? Width and height. Okay, this is pretty self-explanatory as well. Let me create a circle. This is better illustrated with a circle. I have a circle. The width is 268. The height is 268. And the units of measurement are pixels. You could change that to centimeters, to inches, or whatever you'd like. Just for the sake of this, I'll just keep it at pixels. If we change this to 300, let's say we need it to be a specific height. We just change this to 300, hit enter, and it's now 300 by 268. And let me undo that. Let's say we want to make this 300, but we also want the height to be 300 as well. Well, we could turn on the lock button and then hit 300, and then it'll change the height accordingly. So that's... It's kind of like that lock key that locks the proportions. It's kind of like the difference between scaling and holding control when scaling. It locks the proportions. And it's really useful for text or, or anything that you're creating where you need the proportions to be set in place. And again, up here we have the units of measurement. I went over that. Um, effect. Okay, this is kind of, um, it's kind of different. I'll go over the first one here. When scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. I have that turned on. Let me show you what that is. I'm going to turn this red and I'm going to give this a black stroke. Otherwise, uh, you can call it an outline. I'll come over to the stroke paint tab. I'll turn it on. And there we have a black stroke. And the size of it is 10. I'm going to make it 10. And if I hold control and shift and I scale this up, you'll notice that the width of the stroke scales with the width of the shape that I'm scaling. And now the stroke is no longer 10. It's now 33. Now let me undo that. Let's say I want to make this circle bigger, but make sure that the stroke stays 10 pixels. I can go ahead and turn off that box and then scale it up. And once I'm done scaling and I let go of everything, it snaps back to a 10 pixel stroke, which is, um, it, that, that's kind of useful sometimes. I, I use this on and off both equally. I can't really think of a context where I need things to be, um, I need the stroke to be locked in proportion or reverse, but uh, I do use both of those uh, regularly. So I do think it's kind of important to understand that. And I'll t so I'll just turn that back on. And right here we have, when scaling rectangles, scale the radii, the radi I guess the radius of the rounded corners. Let me create a square with rounded corners. Let me get rid of that stroke. Uh, I'm gonna give this rounded corners, right? I give this rounded corners. I'll go back to the select tool. It almost looks like a circle. Well, it is a circle now because of the rounded corners. Now let me scale it up. It's still a circle. It locked the proportion of those rounded corners in place. But if I turn that off, I'll scale this up and look what happened. It's It, it, it kept it at the same uh, increments, the same unit of measurement that it was rounded. But when we scaled it up, it, it, it kept that same size. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty explaining how this works. That's why I'm demonstrating here. If you could just see what I'm doing here, you'll, you'll, you'll get it. So uh, let me make that, uh, put that back at sharp corners. I'll turn that back on. I like to keep that on. I can't think of too many instances where I'm scaling a, uh, a box with rounded corners and I don't want the roundedness of the corners to scale with it in proportion. So uh, what's this one here? Move gradients in filler stroke along with the object. Again, I always have this turned on. Uh, let me show you what this is. I'll bring that up. I'm going to give this a gradient. Um, I'll just make this red. I'll make this ugly looking gradient here. Red and blue. If I take this object, let me turn this off. The move gradients. I'll turn that off. And watch what happens as I move the object. It holds the gradient in place while the object moves, which is kind of strange. I mean, I can't really think of a time where I needed that to be the case, but uh, if I turn that back on, it moves the gradient with it. So that's usually how I keep that. I usually keep that turned on 
And finally this here, move patterns in filler stroke along with the object. So let me, um, patterns, okay. Let me go back to the fill and stroke and I'm gonna give this a solid fill. And that's the color blue. Uh, we, have gray, we have radial gradient, we have linear gradients, radial gradients, and we also have this here, which is pattern, which is, I never really use this. I haven't had much of a use for this. You could fill it in with a pattern. You got stripes one to one, stripes one to two. Uh, you could use a checkerboard. And I'll just use a checkerboard for this. With that turned on, we can scale up the size of this thing and the size of the pattern scales with the object. But if I turn it off and then I scale it and let go, the checkerboard pattern inside of it stays the same. So uh, as, as far as this one goes, I guess it doesn't really matter, well, to me anyway, whether or not this is turned on or not because I never use these, um, these preset fill, uh, patterns here. You can't really do much with them. I mean, it's not like there's individual nodes you can edit. Or maybe there is, and I just don't know how to make that be the case. But uh, I don't normally use patterns, so that really isn't of much use to me. So uh, that's pretty much it for the select tool. Uh, let me go over the basics of the select tool, just in case you don't know. With the select tool, you, you take an object, and you have your scaling handles here. And then you click it again, and now you have your rotation handles. You could rotate this around. And when you have your rotation handles, you also get these little side handles where you could slide this left slide that right or slide that up and you'll see in my tutorials I like to use that a lot for like text and stuff like I'll write some text here and I'll change the font uh, I'll change the font of that to uh, League Gothic and let me scale that up a little bit oops I'll scale that up I'll click it a second time to get the rotation handles and there's the little side handle and I can just slide that up like that and I can give that like a cool looking like a slanted text sort of thing Whereas if I just rotated it around, it wouldn't look the same. Let me show you. I'll compare the two. I'll create both and compare them. Let me scale these down a little bit. Take this text, click on it. I'll just rotate it around that way. But then I'll take this one and I'll give that a slant. And you notice it looks different. You think it does the same thing, but it's really two different things. So um, that's how that works. And finally, um, with the select tool, I'll click on this again to get back to the rotation handles, and we have this little crosshair in the middle. That's the center point of the object, meaning if we rotate the object around, that's going to be the axis on which the object rotates. As I rotate it around, you notice, if you look at the cross there, at the cross right there in the middle of the text, the object is rotating around relative to where that cross is. So let me undo that. If I take this cross and I put it up here, and then I rotate the object, it rotates its around relative to where that cross is now. So um, that's how that works. So uh, that's pretty much it for the select tool. Uh, hopefully that gives you a, a solid understanding of how that works and I'll be going over the rest of these tools eventually. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.